Welcome back everyone, my name is Joe and today I'm going to be showing you how you can make your own spigot slash bucket server for the latest version of Minecraft, what is currently 1.11, it was released a few days ago, so yes, let's get started, but before we start I need to make a quick two little notices, this will still work later, later down the line, so let's say uh, Mojang releases 1.11.2, it will, it will work uh, the same way, just a few different numbers, but I'll explain that later in the video and also, watch this video all the way through, if you start skipping bits you are gonna you'll probably miss out something very important and your server won't work at the end so i do recommend you try and watch it all the way through but anyway with that let's get started so there's a few things you need to download to start off with you actually need to download the actual uh the actual jar file to actually get the spigot file or bucket file whichever one you want to use so what i just did then is click on downloads or just hover over it and it will pop down go to uh, spigot slash build tools and when you're on here, uh, you want to come down to the download section on this corner and you want to click on whatever is the, down, uh, the latest one. So here's the latest one, it's uh, 55. When you watch this video, it could be 56 or 57. Uh, so just click the latest one. And now you want to come over here and click on buildtools.jar and that will download here. I am using Chrome. Uh, that's my preferred browser. Sometimes when you use uh, Firefox, they come as zip files. So I would recommend using uh, Chrome for it. So we're going to let this download. Now it will give you a little uh, warning message saying this could harm your computer. It won't harm your computer. It's just a jar file. So you want to keep. And then the second thing is you actually need to download another program to actually extract all the information out of that jar file to get the spigot file. And that is get. So we want to come over to here and click download and it's going to download it here. So we'll just let that download and then we actually need to install this program. So I'm going to install it now and then it's literally next, 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 install. Don't bother changing anything. I just installed it default. So we're going to let this install. Yours might take a little bit longer depending on your hard drive speed. So, and there we go, finished. I don't want to open them, so there we go. We have get installed now. So now we can actually go and get the jar file out of the uh, build tools. So we want to make a folder. Um, I'm just going to call mine build. We'll open it up and stick in the build tools folder. And now you want to click somewhere around, around this folder and you should get uh, get bash here. That should pop up. Uh, some it can be a little bit fiddly, but it should be there in your menu. So when you click on it, you should get a little uh, black console. And now we need to actually go back, go back here to the main page. So go back to the main page of Spigot, and there is a code right here. So it's Java dash jar space build tools dot jar. Then this is a version number. Now this can change, so when it does change I will be updating in the description, I'll probably put a little date down there, but for now we've got to use this one. So just keep your eye out on there, scroll down to the description, it will be there with all everything else, uh, what you probably need. So what we need to just do here is copy and paste it in here, and then we are going to run it. So depending on your internet speed, your computer speed and how fast their servers are running, it might take a little bit to uh, get this um, I know some people last time in the last tutorial it took 20 minutes and so uh, but normally it can be you know five to six minutes and uh, it will start building now now I'm well I'm just going to talk a little bit about this uh, thing now some of you are probably asking why do you have to do this a little while ago there was a DMC takedown notice on uh, buckets when um, there was some arguing in the community and somebody claimed their code. That's the easiest way I can think of it and it was took to court. Now this is why you've actually got to extract it onto your computer now because it's your responsibility. That's the main reason. But there is a way to get the jar file from third party websites, let's say, where you don't actually have to do this. But that is on your own risk uh, to actually do that. I might link one down in the description, I might not, but you can find them on the uh, on Google. So I just want to warn you there, so if this doesn't work for you and you are having a really hard time, you can find the latest jar files on on the internet. You know, you know some sites are really safe, some, you know, they, some could be dodgy, but this is the proper way. 
you know you're not going to get any viruses this way from it. So yep, I will come back once this is done. Right then, now that is done, I have got my two jar files. We've got a craft bucket, aka bucket, and we've got the spigot, and 1.11 and 1.11. So, now, if you didn't get these, uh, if it didn't work, let's say you, you you didn't get these two folders, but you got everything else, um, re-download the build tools file and rerun it again. If you're still struggling, uh, you will probably want to update your Java and then go from there and if that's still not having problems I do urge you to put in a support ticket and explain it so the actual spigot team can fix it for you uh, or, or you can just post down in the comments down below and I'll help you as far as I can so anyway we got our two jar files everything else in this folder you don't need to know it's 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 pretty much useless if you're not a developer let's say uh, you just need these two end files here so next thing we need to actually do is actually make the server so we need to make a folder and call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine server uh, 1.11, and I'm going to be using the actual spigot file. I don't. I no longer use bucket for some reason. I just prefer using spigot now because uh, bu bucket's no longer being updated by bucket. Bucket's updated by spigot. If you understand what I mean, bucket's closed down. Um, that's why all this DMC stuff happened. What I was explaining earlier. And now we got that here. We need we need a code to run it. But before we run it, we need to actually rename this. So just click rename, and you want to get rid of the dash and the numbers. So it just says spigot dot jar on the end. Uh, some of you won't have the dot jar on the end, so you might want to come over to view and click on file names, and uh, that will actually show you the dot jar on the end. So that might be a quick tip for some of you. But as long as it just says spigot.jar, or if, if not, it's as long as it says spigot, but if you do that way, you'll see the same thing that I'm seeing. And now we need to actually run it. So we need a code. So I use this code up here. So we're in a copy of that. That will be in the description as well. And we need to make a text document. So we'll make a quick text document. Uh, we don't need to call it anything yet. And we're going to edit and paste that code in. What this code is doing is look uh, executing a java command with some ram and it's looking for a jar file here now as long as this name here spigot.jar matches this name right here it, it should work absolutely fine so now we need to save it so the important thing here is you need to go to file save as and then you need to name it name it whatever you want uh, name it run go start i normally call mine run and the important bit here is you need to save it as whatever you name dot bat for bat. Now this will make your file a runnable file. And there we go, it has made a runnable file in here. So now we can click off that and double or delete that old text document. And you should just have these two files. And then we're going to actually run it. So we'll let it just load up for a second. And there we go. And as it states here, uh, you need to agree to the EULA and it wants you to go to the text file just there. So we're going to press any key to close the uh, console and then we're going to open the EULA file. Uh, let me open it up into normal notepad. And where it says false, you need to accept the EULA from here and then just go to save, close it and then rerun the server. Now while that's all loading up, I'm actually going to open Minecraft and we can actually see it's being processed. It's starting to create the world here. And we're going to click uh, play on Minecraft. So this is loading up all we'll fine. No errors yet. That's really good. And we'll wait for it to pop up. So there we go. It is done. And now we've got the you know help message or done message, let's say. When I refresh, there it is. Now there is uh, one way to connect to your server or two ways you can add a server like this and type in the IP address the IP address for the server on your computer is localhost or you can go to direct connect and type in localhost just like this here and press join and as you see here I have joined right there and you can see I'm joining from a localhost connection right there and this is your brand new uh, Minecraft server so we can actually do the version command and as you can see here we're running uh, it's craft bucket but it is spigot because it says down here 
and then MC 1.11 and it's nice and generous. Now, how do you get how do you get permission on your server so you can go into creative? Easy way is to to go into the console, type in OP and then your player name. So for me it would be Quad Bamba. Uh, if I can actually get the right letters in. There we go. I've opt myself and now I'm opt in game as well. So now I can actually go to creative. So game mode one. I can fly about and do what I want here. And you know, um, grab TNT out of my inventory, place it down and blow it up. So that is how you make your Minecraft server on your home PC. So yeah, now let's talk about port forwarding. So port forwarding opens your server up to the internet so your friends connect from another house or even another country. Um, it, it is a very advanced uh, port forwarding is and it's a, it can be quite tasking but it is very useful if you want to invite friends onto your server. Now what I recommend is uh, go down to the description there is a link to a port forwarding video what I recommend. It's not on my channel it's on somebody else's channel. Uh, and he he explains uh, you know everything to do with port forwarding and you know gives you the backstory of it. So go and watch that video and hopefully you'll do it. But it is a very complicated process. I just do want to warn you uh, before you go ahead and do that. But if if you follow along the video and if you understand your router and your internet company, because it all depends on your internet company and the country you live in. So put it that way. So hopefully you understand that. But no, that is your server. And if we just need to close the server. We just press stop and then continue. And then we can close out this black box as well. So that is your Minecraft server. Now, let's say if your black box, um, you know, when you click on the run.bat file and if it didn't open, it flashes, uh, you need to update your Java. That is very easy. Come down into your uh, taskbar and type in Java. And uh, you want to click on the top one, configure Java, and then go to update and update now. And that's how you update your Java. So yes, that is it, guys. I'm sorry if I've been a bit, you know, skipping around area to area on this video. But that's the easiest way I can explain it to you. And I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the server community. And I hope you have a good time playing around with your new spigot slash bucket server. So make sure you like, subscribe, favourite. Go and follow me on Twitter. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.